Ida Randolph, born December 8, 1947, was known as the patriarch of her family. She grew up with the odds against her since her father had gotten into some trouble and ended up in jail. So she grew up in a single parent household like a lot of folks. However, Ida was determined to make something of her life. So she got her education and began working in the field of social services. She was known to have such a huge heart. She was giving and compassionate. As in 1990, she took the responsibility of raising her brand new baby niece, Jana, who was born March 24th, 1990. This was particularly a beautiful thing because Ida was already living pretty freely as a woman in her early 40s who had biological children of her own, but they was already out the house. But Jana's mom was about to lose custody of Jana and Ida didn't want to see Jana get pushed through the system. So she stepped in and she took Jana in. Ida was very much respected and adored by her family, her friends, her neighbors. Everybody loved Ida. Everybody had nothing but good things to say about her. Hence why her loved ones jumped to action when they hadn't heard from neither Ida nor Jana in a few days, which was clearly unusual. Apparently, after not hearing from the mother-daughter duo, Jana's cousin, Mecca Scott, and her brother, Marcus, decided to go to Ida and Jana's home at 2794 Valentine Avenue in the Bedford Park section of my city, the Bronx, New York, to check on them. And when Mecca and Marcus got to the apartment, they knocked on the door, but nobody answered and they wasn't able to get into the apartment. So in a panic, Marcus asked Ida's neighbor, a woman named Fatima Diallo, if he could go through her apartment window to get into Ida and Jana's apartment or to at least see what's going on through the window. I don't know how many of my viewers are familiar with the apartment buildings and the fire escapes, but here in New York City, if you live in one of those like old tenement buildings with a fire escape, you usually share your fire escape with a neighbor. So that's how he was able to actually the neighbor for her help with that so when he asked if he could go through her window she agreed and so he climbed onto the fire escape and he looks through his mother's apartment window and he sees Ida laid out in her blood with blood spatter all over the place and she's in the bed now according to the neighbor Fatima and the cousin Mecca Marcus had returned to the building hallway distraught he was screaming to the top of his lungs that he thought he just saw his mother sprawl out dead and that's when they called 911 and when police arrived on Thursday evening October 3rd 2013 they broke the apartment door down and there's where they saw 65 year old Ida and 23 year old Jana dead in their Bronx New York apartment the women's bodies were found beaten and stabbed to death they were bound with duct tape in two separate bedrooms of the apartment and Jana being naked at the time. NYPD said it was the most grotesque, gruesome scenes they had ever come across. Now, at the time of the crime, many people immediately believed that Jana's ex-boyfriend, who was 23 years old at the time, his name is Andrew Scott, had everything to do with the murder including Jenna's uncle Randy Hill who took to Facebook to express his grief saying that he lost his aunt and his niece to some drug dealing fake thug wannabe and anyone who thought Andrew had anything to do with Ida and Jenna's death were absolutely correct Andrew had everything to do with these murders but not only Andrew, he also recruited two of his little compadres, a man named Joshua Lopez, who was 26 at the time, and a girl named Brittany Austin, who was 23 at the time. I couldn't seem to find a photo of Brittany on the internet at all, so I do apologize for the lack of a visual for her. Now, the good thing about this case is police wasted no time in arresting the trio, as the very next day after the women were found deceased in their home on Friday, October 4th, 2013 is when Andrew, Brittany, and Joshua were all arrested and charged with the heinous crime. Police were able to find Andrew so quickly because his sister told them that he was with his new girlfriend and where they could be found at. And so they went and they picked him up. And I'm assuming at that point, Andrew probably confessed and, you know, included Joshua and Brittany in that. Both Ida and Jana were laid to rest and their funerals were held on Friday, October 11th. 2013 at Eternity Funeral Services located on Gun Hill Road uptown in the Bronx. 
But what are the details of this story and what happened and why did this happen? Why did Andrew do this to these women? The details will be included in the uncensored version of this video on my Patreon. As you know, YouTube censors everything and my video will get suppressed and thrown out of the algorithm if I include the details. That's how heinous and gruesome the specifics of this story is. Jana was fed up with Andrew and his shady ways in their relationship. The two of them had been together for seven years, making them just teenagers, probably juniors in high school when they started dating. Now, Andrew didn't necessarily come from a wholesome home with love and support the way Jana did. So Ida, once again with that huge heart of hers, provided Andrew with the love and guidance she felt he needed so badly in his life. And in 2012, Andrew moved in with Jana and Ida. Things between the couple had become rocky and the relationship had came to an end a couple of weeks before the murders when Jana broke up with Andrew because during a disagreement Andrew had trashed the apartment. So Ida told him he had to go. He had to leave. He had to gather his things and get out of their home. Well this did not sit well with Andrew at all so he plotted his revenge on tuesday night october 1st 2013 he gathered his friends Brittany, who was a dope fiend at the time and josh to assist him in robbing the mother and daughter for their bank cards and obtaining the pin numbers for the cards so he can take money off their cards now how did he even get into the apartment well according to mecca she was with jenna when andrew had called her to tell her that he left some stuff at the house and he wanted to know what time she would be home so he can go and retrieve his things. Jana told him when she'd be home and he was good for coming to pick up his stuff, not even having a clue about his sinister plans. I also want to assume that Andrew probably even had a spare key to the apartment because the apartment was locked when a wellness check for the ladies was initiated, hence the police having to break the door down, unless the door had a sand lock on it and that's why it was locked. But either way, the three dusty thugs gained access into the apartment and began savagely attacking Ida and Jana. The women tried their hardest to fight back, but they were no match for the beastly trio. Ida and Jenna had been dead in the apartment for two whole days before they were found. After two long years of the Randolph's loved ones waiting on justice, a month-long trial, and under two hours of the jury's deliberation, in March of 2015, Bronx District Attorney Robert Johnson reported that Andrew was found guilty and charged with possession of a deadly weapon, two counts of murder in the second degree, and robbery in the first. Andrew was given a sentence of 50 years to life with his earliest release date possibly being on October 2nd, 2063. If he's granted parole, which he won't be eligible for until June of 2063. Joshua was found guilty and charged with possession of a deadly weapon in the second degree and given a sentence of 17 years to life with his earliest release date possibly being on October 1st, 2030 if he's granted parole, which he won't be eligible for until June of 2030. Brittany was found guilty and charged with robbery in the first degree and was given a maximum sentence of 14 years with her earliest conditional release date possibly being just in a couple years on October 3rd, 2025 with a parole interview in August of 2025. I'm not sure what the conditions are exactly but I would assume it's probably based on good behavior. Jana was working a great job at one of the Monty Fury health centers in the Bronx while Ida had just retired from her work as a social services worker. She actually told Jenna that she was going to move out and leave the apartment to her and Andrew so they could have their independence and a place to call their own. Ida was ready to just enjoy the rest of her golden years peacefully, but instead, her and Jenna's years were cut short behind a bum who couldn't take rejection. Now, according to Jenna's cousin Mecca, she said that the two women had endured a from Andrew plenty over the years and tried to distance themselves from him whilst hiding the turmoil from everyone else. However, they forgave him every time he came crawling back. But this time, Jana decided that the relationship no longer served her and with the support of her mother, you know, they took the trash out, the trash being Andrew. And I'm sure they would have never even imagined that after all the years of this degenerate being in their lives and living with them for a year, you know, breaking bread 
shared with them, benefiting from their tender love and care, that he would ever even consider hurting them in such a vicious way. Thief? Yeah. But a cold-blooded murderer? Nah, I don't I don't think these women would have ever foreseen that with Andrew. And so I'll just end the story with this. I'm sending all of my love and healing energy still to the loved ones of the Randolph ladies. This October will make it 10 years since they were unfairly snatched from the world. May the beautiful, lovely ladies, Ida and Jana, continue to rest in heavenly peace.